Yeah, well, this this one's a it's it's a it's a tough one for me to to play and have out in the world because it's so personal. Because um, I did I I wrote it while I was in a a, a relationship, um, okay. and it's it was a relationship that I was in for four years, and we just recently broke up because long distance is almost impossible. Um, so it was this I wrote this near the end of the relationship, and it was just it's so tough being kind of locked away from everybody especially the person that you love mm -hmm. um and it's all these it's it's it is those doubts because it's it's just so hard to to communicate with somebody that you really care about like over text mm -hmm. <laughs> um you know you want to see somebody you want to like you want to have that contact you want to be in the same space as them and when you don't have that all these things kind of get in your head about like oh it's not the same anymore how do they really feel so this is kind of that um, kind of all those feelings wrapped up into one, just wanting to be with somebody but can't. Angeline, won't you please say I love you? Because the farther apart, the fonder my heart, and the less I'm sure it's true. Angeline. So all the while I've been planning for this, uh, we, were, we were meant to talk some two, three weeks ago. We couldn't quite work out. And now we're here. I've had, uh, you know, more than enough time to listen to your record. And um, I think the last time I got this um, swept off by an artist would be probably when I first heard Nora Jones. And wow. it, it, I think that's <laughs> I think that's how unique and powerful your music is. And it's just mind blowing that you're here in uh, in our neck of the woods. So it's an honor. It's a pleasure uh, to be having this conversation with you today, Sean. Well, thank you so much. That's probably the best compliment I've got all year. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, no word of a lie, man. So, okay, let me do this. I want to officially welcome you to Pop Up Conversations. Uh, we're here in Toronto. We talk to artists across the country about the musical journey, uh, what they're working on in the moment. And, you know, it's our honor to be to be talking to you today, Sean. Yeah, my pleasure to be here. Thanks so much. Awesome. Um, I think where I would love to begin um, is w when you meet an artist that is this well grounded, I think you don't want to skip over uh, just what has led them here um, and all of that musical background. So if you don't mind, I would love for you to take me through a journey of uh, firstly, how you fell in love with the guitar, because it appears not appears. It is a huge part of 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 what you do uh, but i want to get that snapshot of when you were coming into music and how music found you and how you guys just uh hit it off okay yeah well um i actually started on the piano believe it or not um oh. yeah because because my dad my dad's a piano player and my mom plays piano too so they're both like might as well get him get him into the family business you know <laughs> okay okay <laughs> so, um, i started i started that when i was seven but it was all just like learn this mozart piece learn this bach piece and you don't want to do that when you're seven years old. Like uh, that's not, that's uh, not uh. fun. <laughs> and then, and, um, and then I started hearing more like rock music and playing like guitar hero and rock band and all that stuff. I'm like, man, guitar is cool. <laughs> so then, then when I was 10, when I was 10, I, I kind of ditched piano and, and just went straight to guitar and I kind of haven't looked back. Um, cause it was kind of like an immediate, like I immediately, like once you, once, once I held it for the first time, it was like, this feels right. Like this feels like it's mm -hmm. what it's supposed to be, you know? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. And you have done a masterful job at learning, uh, learning the guitar. Did you find that it came easy to you or it was something that you had to devote to, uh, devote yourself to? Um, I mean, a, a little of both. I mean, it's, it's such a different thing, especially coming from piano, um, because okay. the piano is so, li li so linear. It's like, okay, cool. You can see where all the notes are, but guitar is like, it's so different because everything's kind of in these grid patterns that you kind of have to wrap uh -huh. your head around. Um, yeah, but I but I think I picked it up I picked it up fairly quickly and I I enjoyed playing it, which helped. Like I never I never went to practice and was like, oh man, got to practice my scales. But I was like, man, I'm really excited to learn how to play this today. Or and and I had so many great um, uh, great teachers over the years and a lot of great inspirations that have really helped me like push towards learning new things and getting better. 
I hear you. I, I, personally, I find there's a utility about just picking up a guitar and and going. Like you can, it it, it can be a you know the yeah, the yeah, mobility of it is fantastic. Yeah, I love. Yeah, it's yeah. so great. Whenever you're at like if you're ever at a party or or hanging out with people or even just going somewhere for a quick show, it's so much easier than carrying a keyboard or a drum set or, you know, it's and it and you can do so much on it. So yeah, I'm really happy that it's my <laughs> instrument. <laughs> <laughs> no again it's uh it, it feels like you you, you were uh, i'm gonna get to that part i don't want to jump ahead but um was there a moment um i know you started writing very early and you know uh from what i read um even at 13 when you started writing those were kind of material that made it into your first project but um when did this all start to become serious? Because I talk to artists all the time. I, I want to find that moment where they actually believe they can pull this off. Like, I can actually be a, a, a professional artist. Like, when was that moment for you? I honestly don't know if it was, like, a specific moment. It was kind of like I started playing guitar um, and I started writing songs. And it was kind of just like I couldn't imagine doing anything else. Like I liked, I liked actually, like I enjoyed science and I enjoyed math and I was like, oh, I could, I could go into engineering or chemistry or something like that. But it was like, I wouldn't have fun doing that. And I, had, I was really helpful. I was really good. Um, and I'm really grateful that I had really supportive parents who were like, yeah, totally go for it. You know, go to music school, learn how to play guitar, you know, do, do your, do your thing. So it was, ne it was never, um, there was never a moment where I was like, I can't do this. It was always, mm -hmm. this is just what it's going to be. Awesome. Awesome. I am so I am so glad that you have chosen this path that you're on because you're doing justice to it and you're making really good music that we're going to come to. Um, but um, I have also read that your, your musical influences, of course, there's John Mayer in there, there's Prince. Um, um, but again, I think if you are astute um, at, at listening to all of these people, um, you can tell that you've been able to 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 craft your own lane as it were um and, and i hear that i hear that i'm like okay um yes this guy's he has influences from all these people like all great people who have come before do have people um they 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 refer to or who they've learned from but what was that process of uh or rather, how do you get to navigate the space between being influenced by those iconic people and being able to, at the same time, you know, push that boundary to craft your own own lane? Um, I like to think, of, I mean, it's it's tough and I never necessarily thought about it super hard, um, but it helps that I have, like, I have a super wide range of people that I draw from. Um, mm -hmm. I spent a lot of years really studying jazz. Um, so listening very specifically to like Joe Pass and Martin Taylor and like um, okay. Coltrane and stuff like that. And then I had those early influences of um, John Mayer and Prince and Gordy Sampson. Um, and even when I was younger, I actually, I'd gotten to a lot of like heavy metal music and I was super into like shredding. So I was like, <laughs> Joe, like Joe Satriani and Steve Vai and all those guys. Um, so I think, I think as the longer you go and the more people you listen to, it kind of just seeps into you if you, if you dig into it. And I think, I think that's kind of where, what's happened to me because I've never really kind of, sat down and been like, oh, got to make sure I don't sound too much like this guy, but just enough like this mm -hmm. guy. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it just kind of just kind of works out nicely. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. OK, um, how does how? OK, so I, I understand you produce as well and stuff like that. I think it shapes just being being able to write and being able to play an instrument and being the producer. I think it puts you a step above um, a step above the next artist that probably cannot do all three. Uh, so the question would be, um, how does that shape how you get to construct your music? Um, uh, there's, I, I often say there's the, there's the record an artist w desires to make and the, the, there's the record they eventually make um, when it's all said and done. But do you find that you get, you're able to bring those two um, um, elements as close as possible because you get to control as much part of the the process as possible yeah absolutely um this is the first time that i've been able to like kind of do everything myself more or less okay. um i played a lot of the instruments myself and and i produced it um and mixed it just like in my bedroom for the past year <laughs> oh my God. Um, and it's, it's incredible it's, thank you thank you but yeah it was it's kind of cool because I'm, I'm a little bit of a control freak so it was nice to have like all those little aspects and like oh yeah i can do this now this is this is i, I can do this i can do this you know uh -huh. um, but it's really cool and it's because for my last ep um i had another producer and another another person mixing it which was fantastic and i and i loved the sound i got out of it 
but there definitely were points where um, just in terms of communication, it was harder to get things across because it'd be like, I could hear it in my head, but I couldn't mm. say how I, how would, how to get there. Whereas yeah, um, yeah. this year I could hear it in my head and be like, okay, let's figure out how to get there by just like twisting knobs and see what happens. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I hear you. I hear you. Okay, before we go to uh, both uh, uh, records that you've just put out, or rather singles that you just put out, I want to ask, um, so because you're able to do so much, um, what do you think you most identify with? I know uh, uh, some of the most times they say, okay, uh, an artist like John Mayer isn't given uh, enough props for his uh, guitar ability, that kind of stuff. Like, but he's an amazing guitar player, and stuff like that. Um, and just personally, what would you say in all of these hats that you wear? Do you think you gravitate to towards the most? Um, so, I mean, sometimes it changes day by day, <laughs> but I okay. think I, I, I like to gravitate more towards uh, being a songwriter more than anything else you know for a long time i just wanted to be like a guitar player but i just i love songwriting so much and 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 i have such a good time just sitting down and and kind of figuring out the problems of like the wordplay of it and how to make it feel and sound as good as i wanted to and get and get a good message across yeah. i love that you say that i love that you say that i think there's a line from uh uh, Santa Barbara Pier, where you talk about options, uh, options to knock yourself unconscious. If I if I remember correct, I'm like, oh my God, how like who 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 writes that, right? <laughs> thank you. So thank you. the music is so good that you really do not have an option to let lyrics go to waste. That's what that's what I feel, right? When you when you produce music at that level, like you have to bring up your writing game to 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 match it. I, I think, um, but. Uh, well done. I know that Angeline just uh, just came out on August the 27th, but we'll just back up a little bit and talk about uh, Santa Barbara Pier. If you want to tell me how that song came about and the process of writing it and uh, just to create the process of creating that, uh, that, uh, that, that, that song. Yeah, for sure. It actually came, it was kind of a roundabout way of, of getting to that song because that took a while to really come full circle. Because okay. I started, as, as a lot of some, a lot of my songs start with like just a voice note or just a, a small snippet of something, like even just a word or a phrase. Um, and that song started with like just the first couple chords and me singing, "I went down to Santa Barbara Pier." Um, okay. And at the time, I didn't even know Santa Barbara Pier. Santa Barbara was a place, let alone that it had like a big pier, because um, the words just kind of fit. So I had that back in I think 2018 was when I'd written just that like 20 seconds of that. And then in 2019, because I went, I went to school um, for music at Humber College. And then in our last year, um, we work a lot in the studio. And so to learn how to produce songs, people bring in their original music and we record them and produce them and just kind of um, look at how to do that. So I volunteered to, to bring in a song without having a new song <laughs> to bring in. <laughs> so I had like a week to finish a new song. So I found, I found this clip again of Santa Barbara Pier and then within a week, kind of polish it up to where I'd wanted it to be because I kind of it seems like I work best under pressure so <laughs> um, so we did that and then and then so at the end of 2019 we recorded it at Humber Studios um, with just a bunch of friends from my class mm -hmm. and then um, this past year I just kept adding more and more to it and polishing it and mixing it and and, mm -hmm. and uh, seeing what I really wanted from it so it kind of took about three years to really become a, a perfected song <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but uh, so I'm always intrigued though. Like, so I, I assume as a writer, you have, you know, amounts of voice notes on your phone of ideas that uh, you have just on the fly. But how do you know which one to chase after? Like, how do you know which one to wrestle with until until you 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 birth them? I mean, sometimes it's kind of just a crapshoot. Like sometimes I'm just going through them, and, uh, and I'm just like, oh, this sounds co kind of cool. And this was some weird thing from five years ago that's just um, just like a weird chorus line. Like the lyrics sound like garbage, but like the melody's kind of cool. Um, but sometimes I label them um, just like, oh, this one's really good, or put a bunch of stars beside it to try and remind myself. Um, but most of them are very good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that says a lot. <laughs> That says a lot. Okay, um, and, uh, and 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 recording it itself. I know you've been you, you've been working almost kind of uh, in stealth mode and by yourself and stuff like that. But um, just just 
recording it itself, the process of recording it, at what point as a producer and as a writer do you say, okay, I've given this all I can give and, and, and this, this single is, is EP ready or is album ready? That's, that's the tough part. I found that to be the hardest part of the, of the entire process of, you know, whether it was writing or recording. Mm -hmm. it's, it's knowing when to stop and say when it's done. Because <laughs> there's so much you can add to it. And, and I, uh, I think the best thing for that for me was just listening to my favorite songs and seeing what they added and how dense the mix was or how many, how many harmony lines they had here. And because it's so easy to go overboard, it's so easy to add like 15 guitar parts. Like at one point I had like, I think 20 guitar parts in one song that were just like flowing over each other. I'm like, this is so cool. So many guitars. Um, but no, it's, it's kind of, it's just knowing how to pare it down and be like, how do I get the message, the message of the song across and just make it interesting and make it sound good without overpowering the feeling. And there's a guitar solo on uh, uh, Santa Barbara Pier um, that is just, it's just beautiful. Like, thank you. When, when you when, when you're doing that, is it is it just off the cuff? Like, are you just just feeling the song? Like, how do you how do you? I can understand the the the, the structure of the uh, of the verses, but when you're doing like a, a a solo, how how does that work? It's tough. It's it's song by song. I approach it differently because I find guitar okay. solos actually pretty hard to write because um i because i studied jazz for so long i was all about improvisation um mm -hmm. so i was so used to just like playing things live and it just be like hey you just improvise a solo and then that's it that's what it's going to be but now yeah. being in the studio having a chance to really craft a solo um it took me a while and a bunch of different passes of me just kind of playing around listening for what i where it wants to go next um and a big thing is like kind of harkening back to the melody because I don't like solos that are just kind of like come out of come out of nowhere and don't really make mm -hmm. sense with what the melody is doing. Um, yeah. So I, so you know I start off the solo with the same melody as the verse, and then rhythmically I keep it similar, but just try and branch out from there. Well, Sean, um, I, I, of course, we're gonna go to Ange Angeline in just a, in just a bit. But I think that uh, your first single is remarkable. Um, I want to say congratulations for putting it out. I love it. I, I've loved listening to it. I think I'm gonna keep listening to it for for the longest time. Um, so I, I get to talk to a lot of a lot of people. Um, uh, I'm very excited when I hear something different and something new. Like I said, the first time I heard. Uh, Nora Jones, I was so, you know, mind blown. And I think that's what you've done to me. So uh, big ups, big props um, for for being that this unique uh, with what you do and just the artistry and the craft that you bring to bring to your music is uh, is remarkable. Um, so thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about the song you put out uh, August 27th, uh, Angeline. Um, um, I have a uh, I have a uh, quote here. Um, I'm going to read that to you and probably we can try and break that down as to as to how you came about it. But you said uh, this song is about how hard it is to have a long distance relationship. Uh, all of the creeping doubts and fears that can make it so hard to love someone you only see a few times a year, especially in the pandemic. I would assume that uh, th there's a lot of uh, experiential stuff going on here. Is that uh, uh, so take me through that process of going through that emotion and then eventually putting it on, on paper. Yeah, well, this, this one's a, it's, it's, a, it's a tough one for me to, to play and have out in the world because it's so personal. Because um, I, I, I wrote it while I was in a, a, a relationship. Um, okay. And it's, it was a relationship that I was in for four years. And we just recently broke up because long distance is almost impossible. Um, 
so it was this i wrote this near the end of the relationship and it was just it's so tough being kind of locked away from everybody especially the person that you love mm -hmm. um and it's all these it's it's it is those doubts because it's it's just so hard to to communicate with somebody that you really care about like over text mm -hmm. <laughs> um you know you want to see somebody you want to like you want to have that contact you want to be in the same space as them and when you don't have that all these things kind of get in your head about like oh it's not the same anymore how do they really feel so this is kind of that um kind of all those feelings wrapped up into one just wanting to be with somebody but can't i hear you i hear you um when 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 you're writing such songs that are kind of really close to uh probably the the burnout of personal experiences how much of yourself uh do you think is necessary to bear um as an artist when you when you when you're writing stuff that's close to you oh i honestly i I'd, i'd say 100% of yourself i always wanted to be as as honest and as vulnerable as possible as much as that might be painful to do <laughs> yeah cuz i just think that if you're going to tell somebody something tell them the whole thing mm -hmm. um and as much as i think i think some of the best stories um uh, are just exaggerated truths but some of the most impactful stories are just the whole truth and nothing more or less angelique angelique oh angelique We don't talk like we used to. We just stare at our screens. I am I am I'm I'm so I'm so excited to have spoken to you today. Um there's so much here. So your talent doesn't I I don't want to belabor the, pro, the you know just the truth of your talent. So I know you, you've won um um your uh so the best pop song in North America in the Intercontinental Music Awards for Against My Will a song uh, from 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 before now which I listened to but um when you hear all of this um when all of this accolades are being thrown your way um what does it do to the process of creating letting you know that you're on the right path like how how does that feel it feels really good it's it's um for me it's just very motivational it's very much just like yeah you're doing the right thing keep doing it um and there are points where i'm like oh no maybe i should keep doing this one specific thing and not and not kind of stray from the box at all um mm -hmm. but i'm i try to kind of keep it all out of my head as much as i can and just try and do what feels right because mm -hmm. everything i put out is going to be is going to be me so i just want it to be as much me as possible <laughs> okay okay no that's a good way to put it i'm so so excited um I'm so so excited for your journey. I I know there's uh there's big stuff coming up for you. Um it's 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 amazing all the stuff that you're doing. I'm a fan of it. Uh we will try here as much as we possibly can to put your music out, point people to your music. Um I think is well worth listening to. Um it's great as fresh as new. I'm I'm really excited and for the last little while i think i've been fortunate to talk about, to talk to artists who uh, don't just make music but who play music as well and i get so excited when i meet people like you because uh, the craft is so important to you like you can hear it in your guitar in the way you pick your guitar and just ah uh, it's it's really good thank you so oh, much yeah <laughs> Congratulations on the music that you've put out. We will put them out on our page and point people to them. But uh, before I let you go, I want to um, just let us know what we can find, uh, what you're currently making, and any other stuff that might be coming up. Yeah, so I mean, we, we talked about the newest single, Santa Barbara Pier and Angeline. They're out everywhere online, anywhere you stream or download music. Um, and my new album's coming out uh, September 17th. Um, and you're gonna be able to. I think the pre-save and pre-order is going to be available this Friday. Um, okay. And I'll have that up on my social media. So on Instagram, you can find me here <laughs> at Sean Bertram. I'm on TikTok too at at Sean Bertram Music, um, Twitter underscore underscore Sean Bertram, and I guess anywhere else you can search my name, you can find me. <laughs> oh, awesome. Okay, for everybody who's gonna go, who's gonna watch this later on, I wanna I wanna encourage you to listen to this uh, to this artist, uh, Sean. He is uh, remarkable. He's impressive. A very impressive you know this this space is not enough typically to just go through the list of 
everything an artist has accomplished but uh for the little that we have seen so far we we can only wish you good things in the future and we know that you're going to accomplish all of that but uh we want to say thank you so so much for your time we want to say keep making music of course absolutely you, you, you're dope at it um, <laughs> um but we'll keep talking and we'll keep supporting you the best way we can sean so thank you so much for your time oh, thanks so much for having me this is so much fun no problem man have yourself a great day but we'll keep talking okay thanks you too